program, my guest will be squadron leader Nusrat Hussain retired, who is a political commentator and author. And also, he has been talking about the region, which is really at this time in the news. And we have been talking about Afghanistan. What ramifications will the withdrawal of U.S. forces from uh, Afghanistan have in the region? Today, I would like to talk to him about a few things. This, uh, basically, a lot of media is uh, coming forward and bringing about the realities of Afghanistan. Just recently, there was an article in The Guardian which talked about how women have come to the streets with guns and ammunition in their hands. And they are saying that uh, with the coming up, uh, going away of the United States forces from there, the Taliban is going to have strongholds and their freedom is in jeopardy. And uh, apart from that, uh, the accord which was done by United States with the Taliban, what does that hold for the nation? So let's talk to squadron leader retired Nusrat Hussain and learn from him as to what is the future in Afghanistan. Uh, squadron leader Nusrat Hussain, welcome to the program. Thank you, Arpeji. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So would like to start off with the article which uh, is in the news. Uh, Everybody is talking about that article uh, where it is talked uh, that women have come to the streets and they are talking about uh, the kind of uh, freedom which is going to be taken away from there. So can you just elaborate what do you take from that article and what is the reality in Afghanistan? Well, the article uh, uh, you are talking about is of Emma Graham, which uh, she published uh, in uh, uh, in the in Guardian, and she is the editor in chief of uh, Guardian. Uh, in uh, she is stationed in Afga in Kabul, and she is editor in chief of Pakistan and Afghanistan affairs. And in that article, she has highlighted that uh, women have come out with weapons to fight against the Taliban, and they are showing th their interest that uh, they are not going to let it happen. How Taliban are whatever they have done in the past in their previous rules, so they are not going to, uh, they will not permit them to repeat those things. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very classical example of a propaganda warfare, because uh, uh, if you uh, listen to Suhail, Mr. Suhail Shaheen, who just recently gave an interview to one of the uh, Western uh, journalists, a television interview in which he, he said very firmly, that we stand by to the accord which was signed by Afghanistan and uh, uh, United States in Doha, if sometimes in February, uh, February 29th, 2020, when they signed and there were four major uh, portions of that accord. That was number one was that uh, Afghanistan soil will not be used by Taliban or by their uh, allies or other fighting groups against the American forces and also against their allies. And the second uh, uh, part of that uh, uh, accord was that uh, there would be a timeline for the withdrawal of the American forces. And then after when these two things are happening or they happen at the same time, there were certain other things that in Afghanistan, intra-Afghan dialogue will start between the Afghan government and the Taliban. and. The fourth part was that because of these dialogues and whatever they do inside Afghanistan, there will be a permanent uh, and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan so that people of Afghanistan can live a normal life and uh, like the rest of the countries. Mm -hmm. So these were the parts. But now when the migrant forces are going out of that uh, place, so uh, there is a, uh, certainly there is a Western propaganda uh, also and Guardian is a very reported, uh, very, uh, I mean, uh, well established and renowned uh, right. newspaper. Right. But at the same time, these tactics are used and uh, that is what is happening. Right. But uh, Scotland to Nusrat Hassan, if we see this picture, you know, in which uh, we are finding these women carrying AK-47s and even uh, rocket launchers with them and uh, they are protesting. So uh, this protest which is happening, after all, all about the accord which you are talking about, and it was agreed between the Taliban and the United States that they will not attack them. But on one hand, after 20 years, United States forces are coming back from Afghanistan. People should have been happy because that has been propagated that America, uh, the evil country, had uh, taken control of Afghanistan. But now that it is going, uh, why is it that the people over there are taking it in a different way now? And uh, ultimately it was to withdraw. But right now the situation is what we are hearing is that the Taliban is 
taking control of the country. So this means that uh, Taliban can again dictate its ways and again there will be insurgency in the country and people will be uh, suffering at the hands of Taliban now? I think uh, 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 that is uh, a fair uh, analysis looking at the uh, past history that Taliban are going to repeat the same thing. But let's look at it, how this, what this war has cost us uh, till today. I mean, uh, to the uh, both the parties involved, America after 20 years, almost about 20 years of engagement in Afghanistan, they are go going out with about uh, deficit of after spending two trillion dollars on this uh, uh, during this period of uh, 18 to 20 years and there have been about uh, 2500 soldiers American soldiers who died during the conflict there have been more than 20,000 wounded American soldiers and after all this 20 years of uh, uh, drama or this this unfortunate uh, uh, killing of innocent people. I'm not talking about the people of Afghanistan, how many, because there is nothing in record, people are speculating and there are, you know, guesses from 100,000 to 100 million uh, to, uh, to a million uh, of civilians and Taliban uh, death during all this, peop right. all this these years. So this is so unfortunate. What have they? What have they gained? What was it? Why the Americans came to Afghanistan? It was that one incident of 9/11, uh, which is still people are still debating about that. What was it? And what have they achieved out of it? I mean, we must understand. We should try to analyze that why Americans went there at the first place and what are, have they achieved now after 20 years? So much of uh, uh, you know uh, they have lost economically, they have lost uh, physically, they get, and, and what is their achievement? What did they get out of it? I don't want to know. I, I don't understand that what was the, uh, what's the gain? How, how? It, it's not even that they have got some, you know, recognition from people or they got, uh, they got some prestige uh, of, uh, they, increase, they increase the prestige of United States. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, people are not looking. The world opinion is also not uh, is changing against all these things. Right. So, so I'm not uh, really sure that what was the aim of this war. Right. And of course, you know, of course, we know the aim. Uh, wherever the United States has gone, you know, the idea is to control that area, and especially this region is very important. But uh, let's get back to Afghanistan right now. The situation is quite tense over there. The reports that are coming is that the militants are sweeping the nation. But this picture that we just saw, women in the north and central regions of the country are staging demonstrations. Can you just tell us a little bit about the country as such that because Afghanistan is also basically a tribal area. So in this area also, in some areas, Taliban is taking control. In some areas, it is again self-directed uh, rule. But the kind of talk that is being held is that uh, women are saying that our freedoms will be gone. What kind of freedoms are they talking about? And especially... Uh, in this article, when we read, there are some things which are quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, appealing also that which women are saying that, you know, in some areas they wear the hijab, in some areas they don't. So that is also being forced on them and other things are being forced on them. And it is not just the women, but the common people are also talking. So can you just explain it to us in details uh, after we come back from this break uh, that what is actually Afghanistan, uh, you know, going in for? Uh, will this Talibization of the country further lead to uh, chaos over there or is there some hope that people can sit and talk and negotiate? What is the Afghanistan government doing over there? Does it have any control or it is just a puppet, was a puppet in the hands of America and now again it will be just uh, following the dictates of the Taliban. So we'll talk all about this after this short break. We are coming back after this break. Please stay tuned and we'll be talking about these important aspects. है जुल्म ढाने का अंदाज भी कितना हसी हमारी जान पर बनाई है जब जब उसने अंगलाई ली कभी खामोश रहते हैं कभी शोर होता है मोहब्बत में शरारत का मजा कुछ और होता है दिल को जज्बात का तोहफा खामोशियों को बात का तोहफा खूबसूरती में जड़ी नजाकत अदाओं की चांद से मुखड़े को चांद सा तोहफा भारत ज्वेलर्स सच्चे प्यार की चमक जैसा फाइव बिजनेस सेंटर सरी छोटे करा तो लेके वे प्रोजेक्ट तक 
ਬਾਹਰੋਂ ਸ਼ਿੰਗਾਰਨ ਲਈ ਮਸ਼ਹੂਰ ਹਨ ਜੇਰੇ ਸਟੋਨ ਕੰਪਨੀ ਵਾਲੇ ਘਰ ਨੂੰ ਟ੍ਰੈਡੀਸ਼ਨਲ ਕੰਟੈਂਪਰਰੀ ਜੋਰਜੀਅਨ ਮਾਡਰਨ ਲੁੱਕ ਦੇਣੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਕਾਲ ਕਰੋ ਜੇਰੇ ਸਟੋਨ ਨੂੰ ਜੋ ਆਪਣੇ ਕਾਬਲ ਸਟਾਫ ਨੂੰ ਭੇਜ ਕੇ ਫ੍ਰੀ ਐਸਟੀਮੇਟ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਸਟੋਨ ਟਾਈਲਸ ਅਰਬਨ ਸਟੋਨ ਮੋਲਡਿੰਗਸ ਅਸੈਸਰੀਸ ਪਿਲਰਸ ਆਦ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਸਟਾਲ ਕਰਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਮਹਾਰਤ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਹਨ 25 ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਵਾਰੰਟੀ ਮੇਨਟੇਨੈਂਸ ਫ੍ਰੀ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਅਪਰੂਵਡ ਟਾਈਲਸ ਦੀ ਵਰਤੋਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਵੇਖੋ ਕਾਲ ਕਰੋ 6046149231 या फिर विजिट करो यूनिट नंबर 500 1515 ब्रॉडवे स्ट्रीट पोर्ट कुकटलम ਕੁਦਰਤ ਦੇ ਸੌਮਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਵਰਤੋਂ ਆਯੁਰਵੇਦਾ ਰਾਹੀਂ 5000 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਚੱਲਦੀ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਬਣਾਏ ਗਏ ਹੈਲਥ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਅਪਰੂਵਡ 100% ਸ਼ੁੱਧ ਆਯੁਰਵੇਦਿਕ ਡਾਇਟਰੀ ਸਪਲੀਮੈਂਟਸ ਦਾ ਲਾਭ ਲੈ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਸਟ੍ਰੈਸ ਐਂਗਜ਼ਾਈਟੀ ਇਨਸੌਮਨੀਆ ਬਲੱਡ ਸ਼ੂਗਰ ਕਿਡਨੀ ਬਲੈਡਰ ਹਾਜ਼ਮਾ ਆਈਸਾਈਟ ਜਾਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਵੀ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੀ ਬਿਮਾਰੀ ਦਾ ਆਰਗੈਨਿਕ ਇਲਾਜ ਜੋੜਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਦਰਦਾਂ ਤੇ ਸਰੀਰਕ ਮਸਾਜ ਲਈ ਕਈ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੇ ਆਯੁਰਵੇਦਿਕ ਤੇਲ ਵੀ ਉਪਲਬਧ ਹਨ ਹੋਲਸੇਲ ਕੀਮਤਾਂ ਲਈ ਕਾਲ 604-628-2003 well uh, the article that you are uh, referring to and what states about the women if you uh, even the article itself talks about couple of 100 women it's a it is few women who think very liberally and who are talking about these things but if you go back to the taliban what is their uh, dream of about afghanistan and what are they thinking now and it appears that they have learned a lot Uh, or they have been firm but they have uh, given some kind of uh, uh, they they have uh, they have brought some flexibility in their thoughts so what they when i was going through that contract it say between the peace accord between uh, usa and uh, and the taliban the peace accord even also says that this peace accord is between islamic emirates of afghanistan which is not recognized by usa as a state every every part where they say the, the, the they refer the contract between the two parties they always uh, it is written over there that islam between the islamic emirates of afghanistan which is not recognized uh, as a state by the usa and is known as taliban mm-hmm. so when they say islamic emirate afghanistan their concept is very clear they want to bring in a uh, uh, islamic law and they want to make it a islamic state as they did in the past but at that time they were they were they had taken very harsh lines islamic extremist lines but now they are saying that we will permit education for the women and but they are asking that the women must wear hijab it is unlike you know the previous time they were asking for burqa where women were all completely covered now there appears to be a, a flexibility in their stance and they are coming to more and i think after 18 years of war if they have not learned now then they should know that they will go back it is for the best interest of afghanistan that afghanistan becomes peaceful 
and people there over there they live a, a, a normal life they should be able to enjoy a life as uh, as we are enjoying here right. and i think uh, although there are everybody is very very suspicious and people are talking about there is going to be civil war mm -hmm. and there is going to be conflict so much of unrest within afghanistan that is again going to create instability to the whole region right. but uh, i think the way they have started now propagating in the west looking at that article of uh, guardian i think it is a uh, 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 it is uncalled for it is not what is happening right now according to the other news that i i am reading and i'm going through it is not that women have come out of a couple of hundred women somewhere right. but uh, i don't think so that but it is going to be that opinion uh, west will of course try to depict it in their own uh, perspective but uh, again from the reports that you are getting uh, when we talk about the civil war uh, the areas which uh, taliban doesn't control right now but these dictates are being given so can you take us to that uh, statement of mr suhail the interview that he gave the taliban leader about the accord now in this accord uh, was it uh, mentioned that it is going to be a now islamic republic of afghanistan and uh, whatever areas which were earlier under the control of tribal leaders and others will also be under their dictate and the way they are spreading their tentacles now in the country do you not uh, foresee a civil war uh, happening over there the accord does not speak anything about uh, that uh, what kind of government they are going to have there it does say that intra afghan dialogue should take place which is i mean there are two different thoughts in afghanistan uh, uh, one is a liberal thought and other is a islamic thought that is of taliban and the other thought of the present government which is uh, uh, run by uh, ashraf ghani so uh, whatever has happened just recently i think uh, uh, taliban afghanistan is about 40 or 41 provinces and i think over 20 provinces are in control of taliban right now and these are the provinces they have come according to taliban and according to some reports that uh, uh, these uh, uh, people uh, the forces of afghan military forces they are freeing and joining afghanistan with their uh, joining taliban with their weapons and uh, they are they are saying uh, uh, voluntarily uh, joining to the taliban they are there there has not been any serious conflict so far uh, you know that has come to light but of course because of uh, this difference of opinion of two forces and uh, while one is in power the power whosoever sits in uh, kabul in afghanistan that who he forms the government and that is the government actually so uh, uh, so right now there is uh, the fleeing of the, uh, those uh, uh, military forces from the government towards uh, taliban is voluntarily people are doing that i have seen some videos which have been you know circulating on the uh, on uh, internet and on social media mm -hmm. so people are joining themselves so ultimately i think they have to they have to get into dialogue they have to talk they have to if they want to bring sanity up to right. afghanistan but uh, uh, sworn leader mr hussain the accord which was done between the taliban and united states now what reports we are getting is that the taliban is claiming that they have uh, uh, hold of 85% of afghanistan that is under their control now now in the accord if the united states forces are withdrawing what was the need for taliban to again regain these areas when uh, is it that the government over there they want to topple the government and bring in their rule or uh, they are afraid of the government or what is the situation that has made the taliban to take control of these areas when in the accord it was uh, mentioned that uh, once the united states security uh, forces withdraw from there uh, it will be their land where they can rule the way they want the people want so now the government that is over there is it not uh, recognized by the taliban uh, what is the situation about that yeah but this uh, government is of course uh, ashraf ghani president ashraf ghani's government is uh, in control because of american support and the support of its allies who are already now in um, who are withdrawing uh, withdrawing from afghanistan now so but, but this they want to certainly the Af uh, it, just like you know anywhere else ashraf ghani wants to continue uh, be in power and taliban they uh, see that they have become a force and they have got into a contract it is because of the uh, uh, 
of the fight that Americans are going out and it is because of that war that has been going on within Afghanistan and fighting with the Taliban. So Taliban claims 85%, I don't know, uh, I haven't uh, gone through that, that they control 85% of Afghanistan. But right now it is, uh, whatever they are saying is that it is because of voluntarily and they are going. It's not like uh, that they have established government somewhere, it is just showing their power right now. But uh, ultimately it has to go back to elections and uh, I think uh, that is who, uh, uh, what would be in the best interest of the both the parties. But before that, if these things continue like this, then of course it will end up in civil war. And uh, to me, it appears that uh, it, it's not going to be like that as most of the Western uh, countries or Western analysts uh, analyst or other people are foreseeing it. I think uh, they will come to a, 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 a peaceful uh, uh, accord or of terms and conditions of how to rule Afghanistan mm -hmm. and the uh, Taliban uh, to me it appears that uh, they are showing flexibility which means they are interested in bringing peace mm -hmm. they have also been fighting and they are the biggest sufferers who have suffered in uh, if they do not learn from it now right. then you know it's anybody's guess right I just got a, got a report right now it says a delegation of Taliban officials Moscow say have said that the group controls 250 of the Afghanistan's 398 districts and uh, on the other hand an Afghanistan government official has said that efforts are underway to recapture Islam Kala. This is a major border uh, area between uh, with Iran which the Taliban has taken control of and it's a main conduit for trade between Afghanistan and Iran and uh, the insurgents continue to make sweeping gains across the country. This is the report which has just come. So uh, let's go for a break. We'll be back in the last segment now with all this happening in uh, Afghanistan. Of course, it will have repercussions on Pakistan also. And uh, as you have mentioned in your previous programs that uh, there is a barbed wire fence between Afghanistan and Pakistan. But if this thing continues and Taliban continues to take uh, control of the area, uh, many people would like to come from there again to Pakistan. What can that situation lead to? And will Pakistan accept those uh, influx of refugees from Afghanistan or they will be sent back? So we'll talk all about this. Let's go for a break and we'll be shortly back and then we'll continue with our discussion. Kar ik aisi tha hundi hai jithe har koi apni niji zindagi de suneri pal yaad rakhta hai. O jaga jithe o renda hai te pyar paraya jivan batit karda hai. E galla taahi pooriya hundiya ne jad kise jaga nu saje hoye kar chu badliya jave. Nave karanu framing to leke finishing tak, drapery paintings to leke decoration accessories tak tusi SK Home Designs diya professional services leke apne supnya de kar nu hakikat ch badal sakte ho. Contact karo Sandeep Kaur 604-825-9 जे किसे बिजनेसमैन नु कोई प्यार करदा है त की वजह हो सकदी सुखी बाट मोटर्स दे ओनर सुखी बाट नु वेख के ए गल समझ आ जांदी है इंटेलिजेंस दा उदाहरण ए है कि कार सेगमेंट तो वक सुखी बाट मोटर्स लेके आए ने सरी दा पहला ट्रक सेंटर जिथे तोहाडे लोड दे हिसाब नाल तोहानो लोडिंग दे ट्रक्स बारे गाइडेंस दित्ती जांदी है स्पेस मॉडिफिकेशन ते फ्यूल एफिशिएंसी सब नु ध्यान विच रखया जांदा है सुखी बाट ट्रक सेंटर ए ना ट्रका नाल ही है टॉर वैन कासा टाइल एट स्टोन शोरूम एक ऐसी था है जिथे तानू होलसेल कीमता ते हर किस्म दी टाइल्स स्टोन मार्बल बैकस्प्लैश मोजेक आदि वाजिब कीमता ते मिल सकता है इटालियन स्पेनिश चाइनीज पोर्सलेन या सिरेमिक टाइल्स या मार्बल स्पेशल ऑर्डर ते या क्लीयरेंस ते ले सकते हो मालिक डायरेक्ट टाइल्स इंपोर्ट करदे हन जिस करके बढ़िया क्वालिटी दा सामान तुसी अपने घर दा श्रृंगार बना सकते हो आज ही विजिट करो 1304284 एवेन्यू सरी पंजाबी हिंदी विच गल करने ली कॉल करो 6043307363 This program is being brought to you with the support of Agni Hotri Immigration Consulting If you are wanting to know about your temporary status you are wanting to come to Canada as a PR you are new to Canada you are an international student you want to hire foreign workers you want to know about express entry or sponsor parents or grandparents you can be helped by Neeragni Hotri who has been working as a certified immigration consultant since 2006. Our phone number is 604-597-2284. For honest and reliable information, call her. 604-597-2284.
let's get back swarnir and nasrudin and continue with our discussion so swarnir what do you feel about uh, all the situation that is it leading to uh, was it expected that the taliban would be so soon in getting control of these areas as soon as the united states starts withdrawing its forces or uh, uh, it has come as a bolt from the blue for the afghanistan government and for pakistan also and what and how will pakistan tackle this crisis well uh, taking control of afghanistan is an ongoing process right now and we do not have uh, much confirmed news that we can say there are different news appearing the taliban are getting control as they are marching in so uh, uh, let's leave that aside and but uh, coming back to pakistan of course pakistan the moment anything happens in afghanistan pakistan is the biggest uh, 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 sufferer or uh, benefitor because uh, if if uh, if afghanistan is stable there is peace in afghanistan that ensures peace in pakistan also and right now policies of pakistani government under imran khan are very loud and clear and imran khan is all focused on uh, uh bringing pakistan uh, out of those economic uh, crisis that have been uh, faced by the pakistani people and uh, he is working he has taken all those macro policy steps where we have seen that international uh, 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 from international agencies they are showing some positive impact about pakistani economy so imran khan is in no mood of getting into war in, or getting into a trouble from anywhere for his uh, government he's already facing internal uh, 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 so much of uh, internal uh, uh, challenges that he's facing and he's fighting with them he's not interested to have an external challenge but at the same time it is going to affect pakistan a lot because if uh, refugees start fly, uh, fleeing towards pakistan then of course it's going to be a great burden on the economy of pakistan they have faced it for last 20 years and uh, now but it's going to be different right now because of the that fencing that uh, barbed wire fencing double chain fencing all along the pakistan and uh, afghanistan border so that means only 10% of that is uh, left which is very rugged and mountainous area but as compared 90% is secured so uh, it won't be as uphill a task for the pakistani forces to guard that 10% uh, border area as compared to because it is all almost about 2600 uh, kilometers long border between afghanistan and pakistan and 10% is uh, is, a, is a very small portion that uh, pakistan forces would be able to hold on but uh, if they start fleeing in of course and that is why pakistan is very interested in peace in afghanistan mm-hmm. uh, and taliban just had a, a meeting in in iran also they are they are going and they are talking in russia iran so iran china and we must understand about this region if we want to take a holistic view of the whole region then whatever is happening in this area is actually to restrict china and this ongoing war has always been there between um, uh, china and uh, and the united states they always want to restrict china economically they want to uh, restrict it militarily and this is the basically because when you give when you uh, there's a war of the superpowers where america wants to continue stay as a superpower and uh, china is emerging as a is a, is a threat to their claim of the only superpower so uh, all these games are played in that context if you if you look back so strings are attached uh, towards that larger aim and goal to achieve supremacy on the world uh, map and uh, b- but uh, that's an ongoing war and these are small things in between those chinese have done different ways they are uh, they are they are approaching afghanistan that the bri that uh, built in uh, road and uh, initiative so uh, they are uh, do, going through a different tactics americans are coming with a different tactics they are coming militarily chinese are using their economic power by by helping the other countries that would be a, a thing to see in the future whether it is a debt trade uh, trap which is uh, loudly talked in the western press as that china is using the debt uh, trap to uh, build those countries and then uh, have influence on them 
So these things, uh, but right now, uh, I think Americans uh, are, uh, the world is going to, people are getting more aware now because of social media, because of this electronic media, so, but right. the news are going and people are getting aware. Can that have, Scott Leader, because uh, right now, as you have mentioned, the situation there is quite dire and of course we do not have confirmed reports of what is happening over there, but on the social media, whatever is being seen, and Mr. Sohail's interview also talks all about uh, all this. But again, the question is that, as you said, Pakistan has already faced the brunt of Taliban in the past 20 years. And now, right now, Prime Minister Imran Khan is very vocal and he has openly talked about that he would like peace to prevail in the region. But if this situation continues as is being told right now, that 85% of Afghanistan has gone into the hands of uh, the Taliban and they will not stop and they'll further keep on increasing their... Uh, targets. But if this happens, uh, will it be possible for Pakistan to stop the influx of refugees? And uh, so there can be bloodbath also over there if this situation continues. But if, uh, because with the United States also we know that Pakistan is not having very strong relations now. So all this can lead to multiple uh, cases of chaos in that region and it can further uh, uh, damage Pakistan. So all that that is happening, what are you foreseeing? Will peace be there or uh, even the Afghanistan government which will not be able to tackle the tide of the Taliban and Taliban will take over and again uh, the way things are happening will have a negative impact in Pakistan also? Yeah, I think your question has a uh, lot many, you know, we have uh, in my answer, I will have to use a lot many ifs and buts. If yeah. this happens, then what happens? But right now, uh, what I foresee, and I hope uh, being an optimistic person, I think that uh, Imran Khan will have more influence if the Taliban's come in far because of his past and because of Pakistan ISI invo involvement with the Taliban. There is, uh, uh, there has been good working relations between the Pakistanis and the Taliban. Mm -hmm. So I think Pakistan will be in a position to exercise uh, some of its influence, but Afghans are very independent people. Taliban are very, you know, uh, free thinkers and uh, they are very strict on whatever they believe in. You cannot influence them for a fundamental uh, shift from their uh, viewpoint. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, yes, Pakistan will be able, Imran Khan in particular will be able to talk to them and tell them that, you know, it is in their own best interest. And Imran Khan, uh, let me say, he's a philosopher. He has vision, the way he thinks about things, the way he talks about things. It's not, uh, you know, but this is how I, I look at it. And, and I want to be honest, if you want me to call biased, then yes, I am biased because I am not supporting Imran Khan. I'm, I'm supporting a philosophy which appears to be the right philosophy and the true philosophy right. where you want to have peace. So I think with Imran Khan in power and if Taliban uh, get in power on the other side of the border, I think things are going to improve. They won't, uh, they won't be, I can't say there won't be, uh, uh, you know, civil war or the infighting. There will be, but I don't think it would go to that extent right. where we can talk about bloodbath uh, words, uh, you know. There will be some few things and I think uh, they should be able to control it because it is, and no, this time it is not only Afghanistan and Pakistan. There are pretty big parts behind it. There is a, right. if you look from the holistic view, if you look, uh, you know, from upper, then China, Russia, Iran, they are all involved and it is uh, their interest and this time they have gone together in a way that they have started showing eyes to uh, United States of America and Americans have realized it that uh, they cannot uh, continue to be uh, that might of war, uh, might of uh, that philosophy of might is right. I think that philosophy has been challenged and has been challenged with that one sentence of absolutely not from Imran Khan. He's a, he, that he's a Pakistan as compared to America is a very, very small, you know, entity. Right. If, so these things, they, 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 they snowball, they multiply. If you see that other countries, they also start joining in and Americans are foreseeing that. So I think this uh, region is going to be a region of peace if the Americans go out from here. Right. So the peace will prevail. Let's hope for the best and thank you that, for this analysis, uh, Squad Leader Nusrat Hussain. As usual, it's a pleasure talking to you and learning from you about the situation prevailing over there. And this was our third episode in the series of talks that we are holding about this region. Thank you very much and best wishes.
Thank you very much, Harpreet Ji. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you, sir. So, uh, this was our guest, coordinator retired Nusrat Hussain, who is a political analyst, author, and a wonderful community member, a social activist. And our purpose of these talks is to make you understand, make you aware of the situation prevailing over there. And as he has mentioned, uh, that the internal turmoil of Afghanistan can have an impact in Pakistan, but uh, the statesmanship of uh, uh, the present Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, can play a dominant role in bringing peace amongst uh, these two neighbors and situation can lead to uh, goodwill and betterment if Taliban takes over. Uh, thank you very much to our viewers for viewing this program. If you also want to be a part of this program, every evening I contact you at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time from Monday to Friday where we have different guests and our purpose is to educate you, inspire you and to empower you. And if you are liking these programs, please subscribe to the program at youtube.com slash show. And if you want to contact me, call me at 604-603-7555 or you can email me at show at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching. Have a safe evening. Stay healthy and enjoy yourself. Thank you. ਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਰੀ ਡੈਲਟਾ ਰਿਚਮੰਡ ਐਬਸਫਰਡ ਜਾਂ ਵੈਂਕੂਵਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਵਾਂ ਘਰ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਬਾਰੇ ਸੋਚ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਜਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਪੁਰਾਣੇ ਘਰ ਨੂੰ ਰੈਨੋਵੇਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹੋ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਤਜਰਬੇਕਾਰ ਬਿਲਡਰ ਇੱਕ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟਿਵ ਇੰਟੀਰੀਅਰ ਡਿਜ਼ਾਈਨਰ ਦੀ ਜੋ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸਹੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਗਾਈਡ ਕਰ ਸਕਣ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸੁਪਨੇ ਦੇ ਘਰ ਨੂੰ ਉਸਾਰ ਸਕਣ ਅੱਜ ਹੀ ਕਾਲ ਕਰੋ ਹਰਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਜਾਂ ਸੰਦੀਪ 6048259295 ਉੱਤੇ लेना चाहते हो नए ते बढ़िया अप्लायंसेस जिमे की स्टोव ओवन फ्रिज वॉशर ड्रायर माइक्रोवेव फ्रीजर्स या डिशवॉशर तो फिर पहुंचो प्रीमियम अप्लायंसेस ते इना दिया तीन ब्रांचेस सरी एबिट्सवर्थ ते चलवा के छन इथे तानु वाजिब कीमता ते अप्लायंसेस मिलनगे ए डिलीवरी ते इंस्टॉलेशन भी करदे हन स्पेशल पैकेजेस फॉर बिल्डर्स एंड होम ओनर्स कॉल 6045904140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 590 4140 604 